Hello, are you studying for your securities test, either the SIE, the Series 6, or the Series 7? Do you need to learn about common stock and the common stock cycle? Well, we're going to cover that in this video to help you get ready to pass that test. And be sure to stick around to the end where we'll do a practice question to help you get ready to pass that test. Let's get started. Okay, welcome back. So, what is a security? Let's talk about that first. So first off, what is a security? A security is any piece of paper that can be traded for value and has risk. Now, there's lots of things that we have in our lives that have value, like a dollar bill, right? So a dollar bill has a certain amount of value because what? Because we all agree that it has a value. And the Security Act of 1934 was further refined by a Supreme Court case in 1946 called the Howey test. Now the Howey test is a four part test. And this four part test says that we're gonna call a security anything that is number one, an investment of money made into, number two, a common enterprise, number three, with the expectation of profit, and number four, through the efforts of a third party. So you're investing in basically somebody else that's going to make some money and that person making money is going to bring profit to you. That's what a security is. So here's some examples of what a security is. A stock, a bond, an option, a mutual fund, jumbo CDs, variable life insurance, not fixed life insurance, but variable life insurance. All those would count as securities. Here's what would not count as a security. Fixed annuities, life insurance, a personal residence, commodities and future contracts. Now, all of these have no risk except for the commodities and future contracts, but those are treated differently under the SEC rules. So they do have risk and there is an expectation to make profit, but they're treated differently. So what does all this mean? Well, have you ever seen the TV show Shark Tank? Well, if you've seen that TV show Shark Tank, people go on the Shark Tank to do what? Raise money for their business. And they can do two things to raise money from the sharks. They can either sell some of the ownership in their business to the sharks in exchange for some money, or they can borrow some money from the sharks. And those are the only two ways for the people on Shark Tank to get the money. And it turns out it's also the only two ways for businesses out there that need to raise money for their business to get money as well. So just like when somebody sells some equity in their business, some ownership in their business in order to get money, that's what a stock is. It's a exchange of ownership or equity in the business in exchange for money that the business will use to grow their business. Or there's debt like borrowing money from the sharks, then that is like a bond. And that means like what? You're borrowing money from the public and there's the expectation that it has to be paid back with interest. Now, in a stock, you make money two ways. There is both capital appreciation, I'm sure you've heard, buy low, sell high, and there's also dividends, which is a distribution of the profits of the company. But on the bond side, you only make money one way, you make interest. Now, yes, there's ways that you can sell at a premium or sell at a discount, but that's just in order to bring the yield in line. The real reason that you have the difference in price, we'll talk about in a future video when we talk about bonds, which will be coming soon. So like I said, inside of a stock, you make money two ways, capital appreciation and dividends, bonds, you only make money one way. Now, this slide right here is really kind of the heart of it. So we're gonna spend a minute on this slide, boys and girls, and make sure we figure out exactly how this thing works. Okay, now, when a corporation is formed, as part of that process, that corporation will get a certain number of shares of what we call authorized stock. Now, this authorized stock is created through the company charter or the organizational papers that create that corporation. There's a set number of shares that are created with that incorporation, and that's all there is. Now, later on, a corporation can 
increase the number of shares. That takes a vote, right? But if they just have opened up, then they've got X number of shares of stock as part of that corporate charter. In order to raise the money, they've got to what? They've got to sell that stock to the public. And in order to do that, they have to go through the registration process, which we'll also talk about in another video. That means we have what? We have a certain number of shares of unissued stock that was created through the corporate charter. When the corporation wants to sell those to the public, that will be done through what's called an IPO, an initial public offering. In order to sell that stock to the public, the stock has to be cleared by the SEC, not authorized or approved. You would never see those terms in a correct answer on a test. So anytime you see those terms authorized or approved connected to the SEC, you know that that answer is a false answer. You wanna be looking out for that one. Now, once the stock is sold to the public, then it becomes what we called issued shares. Now these issued shares or issued stock is now in the hands of the public. And because it's a primary market sale, not secondary market, which is investor to investor, in the primary market sale, the issuer gets the money. That's how we know it's primary market. So the issuer is going to what? Just like on Shark Tank, give the equity, the shares of stock to the investor and then the investor is going to what? Give the money to that corporation. That money that the corporation raises through that initial public offering is used to what? Grow the company, fund future projects, create growth in the company, just like on Shark Tank. Now, over time, what happens is that the company maybe makes some profit, they start doing well, and for a number of different reasons, they may repurchase shares of stock in the open market. Now they're gonna go out in the secondary market, investor to investor, and they're going to buy those shares of stock back. And when they do, those shares that they've rebought will become treasury stock, which means that what? The number of issued stock issued minus the number of treasury stocks bought back will equal the what? The number of outstanding stocks in the marketplace. In other words, the number of outstanding shares is very simply the number of stocks issued minus the number of stocks repurchased for treasury stock. That's a fairly common question on the test and be looking out for that one as well. Now here's the real important part of this slide, which is what? On the right side of the slide here, where we have the outstanding shares, those outstanding shares that are in the hands of the public have voting rights, get dividends. But on the other hand, the shares that are either unissued stocks or treasury stocks, stocks on the left-hand side of this slide have no voting rights and get no dividends. That becomes a really important point to understand for the test because those shares that are in the company's control, which is once again, the unissued shares and the treasury shares, those shares are not going to have to count as shares that have to have rights if they sell more stocks, the rights of rights to not dilute the ownership shares. They don't have to have dividends and they don't have any voting rights. So this is exactly one of the reasons why a company might buy back the number of outstanding shares. Perhaps it's to prevent a hostile takeover because what? Once the company pulls those shares back, then the number of voting shares goes down and a company out there or a person maybe like Elon Musk, that's trying to do a hostile takeover, will get stuck with all those outstanding shares, but not have enough shares to vote in the majority and control the company. So in order to prevent that, a company might what? Repurchase their shares. They also repurchase their shares so they'll have shares on hand for 
stock dividends, stocks on hands for executive bonuses, and stocks on hand in order to be able to redistribute later on and raise more capital. Does that make sense, everybody? So let's go through this again, just to recap. So just like on Shark Tank, for a company to raise capital, they're gonna what? They're either going to sell some equity in their business and get some money back from that, or they're gonna borrow some money from the public and get some money back from that to grow their business. And the bonds will cover in another presentation later on. I'll be a YouTube video on that one, promise you. But for the stocks, for the equities, they're gonna do that through that primary market, that issuer market. And remember that it's only the shares that are in the hands of the public, the outstanding shares that have voting rights. Now, let's talk about a few more details here that have to do with stocks. Now remember, stocks, as we just talked about, represent ownership in the company. The shareholders are fractional owners of that company. The shareholders are fractional owners of that company. So that means that they own a little bit of that company ownership in exchange for the money that they give to the corporation. The corporation has an unlimited liability. The shareholders have a limited liability. Limited to what? Limited to the amount of money that they invested. That means that what? That means that they could lose all of the money that they invest, but not more than that. So nobody's going to come knock on their door and say, hey, the company went out of business. They have this great big bill. They owe all sorts of money. So you have to cough up a little more money. You don't have to do that. You limit your liability when you are a stock investor. And there's the hope that you could get profits distributed through those dividends. Now, junior stock or first type of stock issued is a common thing that you would get talked about in a question on the test. They'll talk about this absolutely on the test, always. Every one of the tests, SIE 6 and 7, all will have at least one question on the liquidation order, which is wages, taxes, bonds, or debt, and then stocks, preferred stock first, and then common stock last, which means common stock is the last in line in a corporate liquidation. In other words, the corporation goes out of business and they have to sell off all their assets and whatever's left is what you get. And if you're a common stockholder, it's not gonna be anything left. But it also has the chance to have growth and appreciation. And none of the other issues do. Preferred stock don't really have a chance to have appreciation. Bonds don't have, but common stock does. Now, you also have the highest risk because what? A company could go out of business, you're last in line to get the money, and that means you might get nothing. You can't lose more than what you put in, but you could lose what you put in. Now, the dividends are not guaranteed. So when a company has excess profits, or if the company is not putting those profits back into growing the company, then you might get a dividend. Not guaranteed, but there's that chance. Also, as we talked about, the outstanding shares, the shares that the shareholder would have, would have voting rights. So that means that they do have control over the company. Once again, how would somebody do a hostile takeover? They buy enough shares of the stock so they have enough shares to vote so that they can control essentially the company. Now, we talked about these terms on that previous slide. Authorized stock, that's the shares that are created by the corporation charter. You have the issued stock, that's the stock that is sold to the investors. You have the outstanding stock, which is the what? Issued minus treasury. And then you have the treasury stock that has been issued, then reacquired. Now, one more advantage about that treasury stock, remember that in order for the company to sell the unissued shares, they have to what? They have to go through that IPO, initial public offering, or they have to go through a subsequent public offering. In other words, every time that that company wants to sell those shares, they've got to get those shares registered with the SEC or go through a registration process. The treasury stock doesn't have to do that. The treasury stock has already been approved. It's already been out in the public. And just like any other share of stock that's sold in the secondary market, that stock can be sold without any sort of regulation or any sort of control on the issuer because they're not selling it as an issuer in that case. 
they're selling it as a secondary investor, investor to investor. It's just the company owns it. They can sell that like any other asset they might sell in order to raise capital. I hope that makes sense. Now, a couple of test subject alerts. And these test subject alerts tell us that what? This is something you can definitely expect to see on the test, especially the SIE test. So for the test, you wanna make sure you can calculate the number of outstanding shares. I've already talked about this. So that means that what? Number of outstanding shares is the number of issued shares minus the number of treasury shares, the number of shares that are bought back. It says, don't get misled by information you don't need, such as the number of authorized shares. The number of authorized shares would have nothing to do with this, only outstanding issued in treasury. Another test subject alert says that for treasury stock, remember that was formerly outstanding, but is repurchased. And because it is on that left-hand side of the chart or that slide, it has what? No voting rights and no dividends. That treasury stock can be what? either issued or retired by that issuing company. Another test subject alert. These test subject alerts are telling you what? This is something that you're probably gonna see on that test, either on the SIE or the six or the seven. These are frequently things that might come up on that test. So reasons to buy the stock back. I've also talked about this, but here's some key points that you have in black and white. It will increase the earnings per share because there's gonna be what? less shares that are outstanding. So the earnings, which is the dividend distributions, are going to be higher for each share because there's fewer shares. You're gonna have these treasury stocks that can be used as either stock options or pensions. I mentioned that for the executives in the company and things like that. They can be used for future capital needs. And here's our question. As a common stockholder, the investor always has the option to sell their stock in the open market at blank prices. The answer here would be what? At the past price, at the current price, at the fair price, at the varying price. Well, when stock is sold in the secondary market, it's sold at the what? At the current price, whatever the price is at that moment. And believe me, it's at that moment. Now that wraps up that concept. Be sure to stick with us for future videos we're gonna have a lot more videos for SIE Series 6, Series 7, and we'll be covering all the important subjects. Also, if you felt like this video provided some value for you, please hit that like button, subscribe if you'd like, hit the notification button so you know when those other videos are coming out, and be sure to check out our website, mortonschools.com. There you'll find classes for insurance, securities licensing, and continuing education on the insurance side. Please sure to come back and see us and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much.